from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, September the 11th, 2019. We open with more rocket attacks from Gaza at southern Israel, sending the area's residents scrambling for bomb shelters and safe rooms. Three rockets were fired towards Israeli communities near the Gaza border this afternoon. Fragments of one of the rockets hit a home in the Chof Ashkelon region breaking a window. The other two are said to have landed in open areas. No injuries were reported. The IDF retaliated hitting two Hamas observation posts in Gaza. Two rockets were fired at the southern cities of Ashkelon and Ashdod last night. Both of those were intercepted by the Iron Dome missile defense system. The IDF responded early this morning with Israeli Air Force jets hitting 15 targets belonging to the terror group. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was holding an election rally in Ashdod at the time of the rocket attacks last night and had to be whisked away to shelter by his security team, something that garnered criticism from his rivals, though the action is protocol. Earlier at the campaign event, Netanyahu promised that if he wins Israel's national elections, which are coming up in just six days, he would declare Israeli sovereignty to a portion of the West Ridge or West Bank, saying, if I receive from you, citizens of Israel, a clear mandate to do so, today I announce my intention to apply with the formation of the next government, Israeli sovereignty over the Jordan Valley and Northern Dead Sea, adding this is the Eastern Shield that ensures that we will never return to being a country with a width of a few kilometers. Many in the Arab world expressed their alarm at Netanyahu's statements. Palestinian officials said such a move would destroy any peace process. Jordanian officials said the action would lead to violence and jeopardize a peace deal. Saudi Arabia condemned it as well. The Organization for Islamic Cooperation said they would hold an emergency meeting on Sunday to take, quote, urgent political and legal measures in response to the prime minister's pledge, which they claim violates the UN Charter. And Netanyahu said he will travel to Sochi on Thursday to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Netanyahu told his cabinet meeting Sunday that the meeting will focus on the continuation of military coordination so as to prevent a collision, given the upsurge in activity against us by Iran and its proxies and our increased activity against them. Looking at some other news, investigators continue to look into the cause of a fire that destroyed most of a historic synagogue in Minnesota. The blaze at Adas Israel in Duluth broke out overnight Monday. The congregation's Torah scrolls were salvaged. The cause and origin of the fire are still unknown, though yesterday, Duluth Police Chief Mike Tuscan told a press conference that there was new evidence in the case, but that he could not share it with the public yet. Over 30 Jewish thinkers and activists from around the world met in Jerusalem this week to launch a new initiative aimed at connecting Jews around the world. Our Common Destiny is a joint initiative between the State of Israel under the auspices of President Reuven Rivlin, Israel's Ministry of Diaspora Affairs, and the Genesis Philanthropy Group. The leaders who included the head of the Council of European Rabbis, Rabbi Pinchas Goldschmidt, and Brandeis Professor Jonathan Sarna presented the first draft of the declaration to President Rivlin yesterday, who called it a roadmap for the future and the unity of the Jewish people. We must embrace our unity and our diversity. We must see our diversity not as a source of weakness, but a source of strength. Fifty senior American police officers are in Israel this week, part of the Police Unity Tour, which was founded in 1997 to raise awareness of officers who fell in the line of duty. The visit to Israel is also aimed at strengthening cooperation between the two countries. And American officers will be meeting with their Israeli counterparts and visiting, among other communities, communities affected by rockets from Gaza. Israeli officers will join the American officers in a two-day motorcycle ride across the country for the tour. Last night, they attended the ceremony at Israel's 9-11 memorial in Jerusalem, just ahead of today's 18th anniversary of the horrific terror attacks. 
The Jewish state's official Twitter stated that Israel stands shoulder to shoulder with America in the fight against terrorism and grieves with families of the victims of the September 11th attacks. They also mentioned a new art installation at the memorial in Jerusalem, two 300-meter tall illuminated pillars, which is close to 1,000 feet, shining across the city, symbolizing New York City's Twin Towers. Prime Minister Netanyahu attended the ceremony along with U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman. Netanyahu later tweeted his support, as did the IDF who said it stands with the American people in their mourning. An official ceremony was also held today at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. And here at JBS, we remember those who were murdered in the 9-11 attacks with special programming in their honor. At 7 on Faith to Faith, Deborah Burlingame, sister of Charles Burlingame, the pilot of American Airlines Flight 77, discusses the tragedy with Rabbi Joseph Potasnik. At 7.30, author Michelle Haymoff talks about her first novel, which tells the story of recent college graduates finding themselves in the chaos of New York City following 9-11. At 8, Professor Mordechai Kedar looks at the rise of Islamic terror. In other programming at 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with Shai Held, founding president, dean, and chair in Jewish thought of the Hadar Institute who talks about growing up the child of survivor Zionist parents and how his upbringing shaped his life and Jewish journey. At 10, it's a look at Jewish female self-identity. And coming up right after this newscast, it's Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, September the 11th, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.